China may be creating genetically modified super soldiers. No, this is not a movie. This is real life. Hello, my name is Nissi T and welcome to Watchman News, breaking the breaking news. Now, if there's one thing recent times has shown us is that social media is a powerful tool and can do a lot of things, including putting people back in jail or even increasing their bond. Just a few days ago, a man in Michigan in the United States shot at a six year old boy after the boy had allegedly left his bike on his lawn. According to reports, the little boy was innocently playing near his family home when Ryan Lin Guyen initially, according to the boy, threw a sledgehammer at him but missed. It's alleged that Ryan then went on to shoot at the boy and actually managed to hit the boy with a bullet going right through his arm. Footage can be seen all over the internet of the boy running and crying out for his mum after gunshots were heard. Now, initially, it was reported that the perpetrator of this incident was released from jail. Can you imagine that? Released from jail after trying to kill a child, but was released with an initial $10,000 bond. And he was free to go back to his home and roam the streets as though nothing had ever happened. But after public outcry across social media, it seems that the message was read loud and clear. It was a second judge that was then to oversee the case that indicated that new forms of evidence had been brought to the forefront and so Ryan was put straight back into jail and his bond was increased to a hundred thousand dollars rather than the initial ten thousand. The news was of course welcomed by many across social media and especially his parents who couldn't quite understand how a man who in essence again tried to kill and could have very much killed this little child at the age of six years old, was able to be let go to walk around the streets as though nothing had ever happened. Well, Kobe Daniels is the name of the brave six-year-old boy who, thank God, has lived to tell the story. But what's very interesting in this entire story is more about the role social media currently plays in justice and legal systems across the globe. And in saying that, I have two questions because as you know, I love to offer up some questions for you to get thinking. My first question is this, what part should social media play in justice or should it play any role at all? My second question is then this, in this case, social media helped to serve justice as it should. There was evidence behind it. This child did not deserve to be treated like that, nor should this child have to experience such a traumatic experience at the age of six or ever, should I even say. But what about in cases where social media is perhaps behind a narrative that maybe isn't as clear or straightforward as some might think? If social media has the power to be judge, jury and executioner of justice, how can we trust that it's unbiased and fair as many people argue it should be? But let me know your thoughts by leaving a comment below and let's talk. Should social media play such a big role in the justice system or should the two stay completely separate? A recent Netflix series that even I started not too long ago by the name of Sweet Tooth has become increasingly popular across the globe. I haven't quite finished the series just yet, but essentially it's a story about what they call in the film hybrids, a cross between humans and animals. And the story starts by particularly following one boy who's nicknamed Sweet Tooth, a boy who's half boy and half deer. Now, while watching the show, of course, your mind starts to go to crazy places. And as you sit there, your mind starts to wander and go into its imagination. And you start to think about what life would be like or how you might even react if you started seeing half humans and half animals just roaming around the streets. But what happens in a film is one thing. But when this starts to cross over into real life, 
That's a whole other story. Five months ago, Prophet Tomi Araimi sat down right here on Rig Nation and prophesied, stating that we had nine more years. In this prophecy, he also spoke about DNA and genetic manipulation, stating that 2021 would be a year of a race to compete with China over DNA and genetic manipulation much like the space race between Russia and the US. He then went on to add, nations will drop their ethics code to allow man to carry out testing on humanity. 2021 shall be a year of a race to compete with China over DNA and genetic manipulation, much like the space race between Russia and USA. You will see nations drop their ethics code to allow man to carry out testing upon humanity. Some of it in the name of good, others in the, in the vein of good. Your eyes will say, how did we let this happen so quickly? But the Lord says, there will be those nations who will compete with China. And what was unacceptable before in the name of good will become acceptable. Science will smile as funding develops, not just for vaccines, but for evolution of mankind. And people will awake as if from a bad science fiction dream. To some, this might sound crazy or even insane, but things are only insane until they actually start happening. I mean, this is 2021. We've seen pretty much everything and so much more. Now, according to reports that have just risen to the surface, which no one actually spoke about, neither then when this first came out, nor now as things are starting to creep up to the surface. But according to these reports, China has actually been conducting bio Biological tests in order for them to create what are being referred to as super soldiers. According to top intelligence officials in the United States, they have claimed that China has been conducted human testing to develop soldiers with biologically enhanced capabilities. It is said that China has even conducted human testing on members of the People's Liberation Army, again in the hopes that they would be able to create some form of superhuman soldiers or superhuman police force. Now, human testing is nothing new. We all know this. We've seen it in history and even rumors that have been shared in the past. We all know it happens. Now, the United States has done it many a times. Just a few days ago, the woman that many love to hate, Miss Candace Owens, went back in history to talk about the Tuskegee syphilis study, which was officially called the Tuskegee study of untreated syphilis in the Negro male, which was conducted between 1932 and 1972, which was one of the greatest abuses of science and just general human ethics in history. So the US, please don't start acting like you are innocent or as though China is doing something new. But as these superpowers look for new ways to get ahead of each other, whether it be China or the United States, or even here in the United Kingdom, something that we cannot deny is something that was also said under a video that Prophet Tomi Araimi released just a few days ago, where it was stated, the further away we move from God, the crazier things become. Let's take a moment to put this into perspective. We're playing around with cells, blood, and now DNA. So much so that there have been many reports, even over the past few years, of DNA being put into animals, even here in the UK, all in the name of science. Now, if this really has become a race to create these strong superhumans that govern our streets, what do we expect? If we already have seen an abuse of power and calls for justice, whether it be from Americans calling to defund the police or Nigerians calling for an end to SARS, what do we think will happen if no one can physically police the police or those in law enforcement. Now, perhaps I'm just being dramatic, over the top and crazy. Perhaps you're looking at the screen and thinking, but Nissi, think of all the possibilities. What if we could modify DNA to create humans that just don't sleep? They could work and work and work, and they could get to a point where they build up our economies. Or humans that are so strong that they could build home in two days, perhaps. But my question would be this. If these were the individuals that we create, could we actually say that they are humans if this is what they are capable of doing?
But this is why I open up the conversation and I present it to you with these very questions. Superhuman police or army force coming out of China who seem to be ahead in the game. A breakthrough in science or are we just going way too far? And just before I conclude, let me just throw in another spanner into the works. Now it might seem like I'm going off on a tangent, but I promise you it is connected. Now, after hearing about what is happening in China with regards to all the different claims of superhumans and super soldiers, does this not further add to claims that this pandemic that we're experiencing right here, right now, that has killed millions of people across the globe may very well have been created in a lab in Wuhan as was initially suggested by so many. But again, maybe even after the leaking of Fauci's documents that we spoke about just last week, maybe I'm still being insane and maybe the people out there who are claiming this are also equally crazy. But you tell me, make sure you leave a comment below and let's start that conversation. Are we going way too far? Are superhumans a thing that we should just leave alone? Or perhaps this is actually what we need to create a new race of individuals and people to defy all odds. After being postponed due to the ongoing pandemic on the 11th of June 2021, the UEFA Euro 2020 kicked off. And while many, especially here in the UK, were happy that pubs were finally open so that they could enjoy the games with their friends and their family, something else has been the main focus, taking the knee. After the tragic murder of George Floyd in May of last year, which sparked widespread protests across the globe, athletes have been taking the knee across many sports as a form of anti-racist statement. Taking the knee has become a global symbol of what many argue is a symbol of unity, understanding and undeniable resistance against racism. And this is what the England team did just before their opening Euro 2020 game against Croatia. A gesture that was met with a huge amount of booing from the crowd. Now, Home Secretary Priti Patel has since been in hot water after stating in recent interviews that people have every right to boo, which of course they do. But she also then said that this was deemed, or what she seemed to deem, gesture politics. Now, of course, social media went into complete outrage with Priti Patel even trending across Twitter. Now, this is the same woman who, of course, did say that she personally was not in support of the protests surrounding Black Lives Matter at the time, and who has also said that there are other ways that people can express their opinion. Now, as you know, this has been a controversial argument for a while, especially in the United States, with this going back to even when Colin Kaepernick decided to sit it down during the national anthem in 2016 as a form of resistance against police brutality and racism. He too has taken the knee in many occasions and consequently went through a number of trials as a result of it. Now many have argued that politics or social justice and sports shouldn't mix. With that, many have claimed that taking the knee takes away from the sport. Now, as you know, I like to look at things from a wider lens. So on the one hand, I completely understand why taking the knee would be seen as admirable. It's making a very clear and bold statement. It's saying that racism, brutality and injustice of any kind is not welcome and will not be tolerated. It's a form of expression, which just like Priti Patel argues, which can be used in this occasion, every player or person has the right to do. It gives people an opportunity to be faced with the fact that there are still issues of inequality across various countries in the West, and it shows a sense of unity around a common message against racism. This I completely get, and much like the moment two black athletes, Tommy Smith and John Carlos, raised a black gloved fist during the playing of the US national anthem in their medal ceremony in 1968, that too was seen as iconic iconic, admirable, and maybe even necessary. Now, this historic moment may not have necessarily changed policy, but it definitely sent a message, a message of black power. But now let's talk policy for a second, and let's look at things from the other perspective. On the other hand, when Priti Patel uses words like gesture politics, how many of us can really say that she isn't actually telling the truth? When players take the knee, which in a year from now, they probably won't do anymore, let's be honest, because it's no longer the trend or what everyone is doing, would laws and policies have been implemented in order to combat racism? Probably not. Would injustices that are caused due to or in line with racism, 
have stopped? Once again, probably not. Does it actually make the lives of black or brown people living, whether it be right here in the UK or in the United States, any better? I can almost guarantee it probably won't. Because while it sends out a message, and a message can be great at times, but if the whole point of BLM or protesting is to make a difference and effectively improve the lives of a so-called oppressed people, how does taking the knee do that? And that's where the real question is. Now to all the people that booed during this and when they saw this, some may argue that they booed because they just are racist. And let's be real, there are some racist people in the world. Now, some may have also booed because they don't see the point. But again, this is just a breakdown of my personal thoughts. And I'd like to ask you to do one thing, just take a step back. Rather than reacting in anger, bitterness or resentment, take a step back and let me know what you see. Of course, leave a comment below and let's continue the conversation. Like I always say, this is never a monologue. This is always a conversation. So with that, I'd like to thank you once again for tuning into Watchman News. Now, if you haven't done it already, make sure you like, subscribe, and of course share, and make sure you hit that bell button so you're notified every single time we post a brand new video. And something else I'd like to add is that if there is a story that you think that we should be covering right here on Watchman News, make sure you leave it in the comment below. Let's make sure that this continues to be an equal conversation. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you again soon.